and welcome back to the Coach channel. Today I'm really excited to share with you not only my oracle deck or tarot deck reading routine, just basically how I go about incorporating readings into my day-to-day -day journaling or my weekly journaling or my lunar cyclic <laughs> journaling, all of that fun stuff. But also I'm gonna share with you all of the decks that I currently have, which ones are my favorite, which ones I think are worth the investment. I mean, obviously I love all the decks I have, otherwise I wouldn't have them, but you definitely don't need more than just one deck. So without further ado, let's jump in since we have quite a few things to share today. I'm gonna to be sharing with you not only my favorite spreads, but how I actually transfer those things into journal posts. One thing I will answer because I know that it'll likely be a question that I'll get but it's also something that I see talked about quite a bit is is tarot evil and absolutely not I mean tarot is really just pictures printed on paper and it's all about the intention when using tarot that creates whether or not something is actually anything is evil it's all about the interpretation of the use and the intention of the use so it's really just a tool for you to understand not only your deep subconscious, but also pull messages from the collective subconscious or your intuition. It really depends on what you believe in. To me, it doesn't really matter exactly where you think you're getting the messages from. It's all about how you're interpreting them and then how you translate that message with yourself. I mean, none of us can really prove where these messages come from. Some people tend to think that, you know, it's kind of all taboo and it, you're just making these things up. Other people do believe that you're getting messages either from guides, ancestors, spirits, the higher self, the divine. There's so many layers you can go into, including the collective consciousness, which is the idea of the collective energy of everything in the universe. That there's this idea that we're separated from the collective consciousness. I mean, there is no way to prove who's right or wrong. So it's really down to whether or not you gain something from it. If you're unsure about whether it's something you'd be interested in, I'd highly recommend getting a tarot reading or looking into it yourself, but also if you just tend to be an intuitive person, if you tend to enjoy a little bit of the esoteric and also are looking for a tool in order to mirror back to yourself some messages from your deep subconscious or anything else you might believe in, then it could be a really interesting route for you to get into. So I've been collecting Oracle and Tarot decks since 2000 and I actually it was Christmas of 2017 that I got my very first Tarot deck. It is the Kim Kranz, the Wild Unknown Tarot deck. And this deck I got from my sister for Christmas. I was interested in tarot. I was so new to the game. I really wanted to get into it. We had done some readings from the rock store based in Toronto, Ontario with Jane. And so I had really taken a liking to her readings and wanted to understand it more myself, wanted to be able to work through my own intuitive tools to give myself some readings. And so this was the first deck I ever had and I absolutely love it. Now, in terms of tarot decks, I have two. Actually, technically three, but two of them are the same. One of them is just jumbo and the other one is miniature. These are both the Rider Weight decks. These are the OG tarot decks in terms of longevity of use and like the origins of tarot, I guess you might say. But these are the original tarot decks in terms of what you'll see a lot of tarot readers use. And also originally what a lot of people tend to choose for their very first decks, since there is so much out there in terms of meanings and comprehensions of this deck. Most decks you get nowadays do come with a guidebook. So the first tarot deck that I came to understand myself was this deck and through this guidebook, but it was interesting because I did eventually invest in the Rider Waite deck, being that the first ever tarot readings I had ever been given were with this deck. And then I also went ahead and did a tarot workshop. So it was a two hour workshop. And it was really interesting because learning about this deck, you can learn about so much of the symbolism in the cards. In the workshop, which I can leave a link to down below if it's something you're interested in, Jane went through not only the numerology behind the cards, but also the suit of the cards. For instance, swords would be air. You have cups, which are water. You have wands, which are fire and then you have pentacles which are earth but she even went into 
the symbolism behind like for instance here we have the two of pentacles you'll see one foot is up one foot is grounded this means things are not as stable as they could be you can also pay attention to things like the water you can look for archways or for rainbows or for cups you can look are they upright are they tilted or spilt there's a lot of symbolism in the rider weight decks that have a lot of history to them so if you are looking to get into a little bit more of the classic tarot i do recommend this deck if you don't really mind to get into any kind of tarot deck because as i said most decks do come with guidebooks then i do recommend checking out the kim crayon's wild unknown tarot the artwork in this deck is absolutely beautiful i had lots of messages come through lots of meanings come through and the really cool thing about this deck as well is instead of the kings and the queens and the page and the knights it's actually daughter son father and mother in this deck as well so it's really all about what you're looking for and then the only reason why i got a mini deck was for travel this is the deck that i like to bring with me when i'm traveling anywhere because it's so easy to just throw into my bag um, it's the exact same deck just mini now let's talk oracle decks the difference between tarot decks and oracle decks is oracle decks can really mean anything they don't have to follow the suits they don't have to follow any kind of numerology instead they can be a little bit more symbolic so this might be something that you would be interested in if tarot doesn't really call to you but you would like to play around with some decks there are so many out there with so many different symbolisms so i'll share with you guys the ones that i currently have and which ones are my favorite this is the wild unknown animal spirit guidebook and tarot deck or sorry oracle deck this deck is not tarot it doesn't follow numerology it does follow the elements in terms of that's how each of the animals are broken up into the four groups and then there's the fifth group of spirit which is kind of like the major arcana in tarot which i did not get into but the idea is that you have more overarching symbolism within the decks so while the four elements of animals are kind of more so within the different elements within ourselves whether it's your passions whether it's your emotions whether it's your material world or your mind the spirit realm of this deck which actually symbolizes itself in the circle symbol this is meant to be more of a overarching theme or something that might be going on more so on your soul's journey but again it's all about how you read the deck for what message you're gonna get so there are five suits in this deck and they are all animals personally i really love this deck for really channeling exactly the kind of energy i feel i should be emanating or working with or towards now i believe the next deck that i ever got was the moonology deck this is by yasmin boland and i actually originally read her book moonology and and this deck is very much pulled from the teachings of that book so it's all about the cycles of the moon this is a really great deck to work with during any of the moon cycles be it a new moon a full moon it could be an eclipse it could be at you name it and there are no suits to this deck it's just all about basically the phases of the moon and the signs at which the moon can be in so for instance this is the full moon and capricorn card you have the actual phases so for instance this is the waxing moon card Card and the message is the energy is gaining momentum it's like the light of the moon is starting to fill but then you also have cards that read into the station of the moon so for instance this is full moon in cancer you also get a new moon in cancer and all of the astrology signs and it's all about again the message behind the card the energy behind the card but also if you're pulling let's say one about a specific sign it might be the message or the energy behind that sign and of course this one comes with a guidebook as well they all come with guidebooks the next deck i had ever received was the work your light oracle deck by rebecca campbell this is one of my favorites this isn't just one of my favorites because of the messaging and i've also read light is the new black written by rebecca campbell and that's partially what led me to this deck but the artwork of this deck is some of the most beautiful i've seen and i've seen some beautiful decks i love the art 
of this deck. Like there is something about it. It's also the colors. I love that it's all pastels and pinks and blues and purples. It's just so beautiful. The messaging behind these cards are also beautiful. So again, there are no suits to this deck. Each card is just a different message. For instance, let's pull a card. This one is Warrior Woman and it says, have you answered your deepest calling? Again, this one also comes with a guidebook where you can dive deeper into the messaging behind the card, which is a great way to get to know your deck but it's also such a beautiful deck for just looking at the artwork and seeing what message comes through to you based on the message on the card and what you're seeing, the colors and everything. This is Keepers of the Earth, You Are Not Alone, Ancient Ancestors Stand Behind You. This one is probably one of my favorites to go to and my favorites to read in terms of when I'm reading other people. My other favorite deck, Oracle deck, is one for all of you guys out there that might love yoga. This is the A Yoga Path deck and it's by Sahara Rose. Again, this is one of my favorites for the artwork. The artwork is absolutely beautiful, but also if you are a yogi or you love yoga and you want to understand or learn more about yoga philosophy, this deck is such a great way to do it because not only are you reading messages that again, just like with any other deck, you can pull from and understand, but you're going to learn a lot more about yoga philosophy each time you use this deck. It goes into all of the deities, it goes into the yoga sutras, it goes into the limbs of yoga. It goes into so many different things. It goes into the chakra systems. It's just such a beautiful deck, not only for the messaging, but also for deepening your understanding of yoga philosophy, which is why I also highly recommend it. I also think this is just like a beautiful deck for working with your personal path, your dharma, if you will. I find I pull on this deck a lot whenever I want some sort of message for how I should move forward in terms of my soul's journey. All my other decks seem to be a little bit more of like a cocoon comfort blanket, whereas this one, I feel like this is such a guide. This one feels like more of a teacher to me, something that pulls me forward, something that helps me see through or cut through my own bullshit sometimes. This is that deck. And again, this one comes with a beautiful guidebook as well, full of all of the messages so that you can deepen your understanding. So I have two more decks to show you. This is a deck that was recommended to me by my friend. I actually read from her deck when I was visiting her once and I, I just, I had to get it. It was just such a beautiful deck. It's a very feminine deck. This is Oracle of the Mermaids and it's all about sirens, which again, like I said, very feminine. Each deck is a different siren and each one has a different symbolism behind it. These ones are numbered as well. This is a deck that I like to pull on anytime I'm feeling a little bit more in my divine feminine energy. You have cards like telepathy. You have cards like the Selkie and her skin. You have cards like Divine Sensuality, and this deck I feel like is so beautiful in terms of helping you really harness into your feminine energy, embrace your inner siren, if you will. It's a beautiful deck in terms of almost like myths and mythology, but tying it together in such a poetic and beautiful way that you can pull a message from every single card. There's also a guidebook to this one as well, obviously. And in it, there is a full divination section. So how you can actually take action on the meaning behind the card, which I think is really cool. And it's just such a beautiful deck. And now the very last deck that I have to show you is the Healing Mantra deck. This is one of my newer decks and I am in love. This deck is quite literally just mantras on every single card. Again, I'm loving the colors, all of these little pastels, but the beautiful thing about this deck is that each card comes with a mantra and a healing message. It's such a simple deck that you wouldn't need the guidebook, although it does come with one, should you want to look for a little bit of a deeper message behind your card. But I feel like this is such a beautiful daily deck. If you're looking for something that isn't so much about tapping into your deep intuition and you just want affirmations every day or a mantra every day or a little pick-me-up every day this is that deck this one says expressing free will and then if you flip it to the back it's just a little bit longer of a message for instance my choices determine how brightly I shine and that's literally all you would have to take with you for the day you could really draw on the color you could really draw on the message but again if you wanted to you could open up the guidebook and dive deeper if you're looking for a little bit more rhetoric on what it was you asked I just feel like this is the kind of deck that 
that you wouldn't even necessarily have to ask anything. You could perhaps just get your daily message and be on your way. So this is a great deck for that. I also feel like this would be such a great deck as a gift, especially to anyone you might know that might be going through a tough time or struggling or someone who's going through a healing journey, somebody who is deeply spiritual or likes affirmations. Like this is such a beautiful deck for that. And like I said, like it's just such a beautiful, colorful deck. It's just hard not to feel happy with this deck, you know? So let's talk a little bit about spreads. Now I already know I've been talking for quite a bit sharing with you all of the decks, so I'll try and make this nice and quick, but also informative. Be sure to pay attention to the screen if you wanna actually see the layouts that I'm talking about. The very first way that you can use any deck of any kind is just pulling one card. Now how you do this, you literally can ask a question, you can ask for a message of the day, for the energy of the day, you can ask a yes or no question depending on how you would strategize or look at your cards or read your cards to be a positive or perhaps not necessarily a negative but more of a no if you know what I mean. So you would have to make that decision first or perhaps read into the card and see what message comes through to you. There's so many ways that you could just pull one card and get that kind of answer that you're looking for. The next spread you can do is a three card spread. So how you would do this is totally up to you by the way. How you want to cleanse your deck, clear the energy from your deck. I like to knock on my deck, flip it over a couple times. I like to shuffle nine times, not sure why. Scan out the deck and then pull cards. Some people like to flip right from the top. It's all about your own personal preference. I really don't think there's a wrong way to do it as long as you feel connected to your way. And then for a three card spread, you would pull three cards. And with each card, you could do something like past, present, or future. You could also do mind, body, and spirit. You could also do the situation, the energy surrounding the situation or the challenge surrounding the situation and the likely outcome. Anything that can be broken down into three general aspects. You could do you, someone else, and then your energy together. Three card spreads are a great place to start with getting to understand and learn your deck. They're also a great place to start with getting to get into tarot readings for yourself. That makes it nice and easy without too much complication. Now, if you want to bring it a little bit deeper, you can also do five card spreads. Now, five card spreads, again, it's honestly all about what you want each card to mean. And I think the biggest emphasis is about knowing what you're asking before you pull the card. That's gonna clarify your message. So when I do five card spreads, I like to look at it as the past, the present, the future, the possible obstacle or energy of the situation, and the likely outcome. This is my favorite spread to do when I'm not looking to go super deep into something like a Celtic cross, which we're gonna get into in just a second here. This is also a spread I like to do when I wanna play with multiple decks. So I might pull a card from each deck for all of the five spaces. You could choose any five things. You could do you, somebody else, your general energy together, your challenges as a couple or a friendship or a relationship, and the likely future of your general energy relationship or friendship, so on and so forth. It's just all about knowing what you're asking before you pull the card. Just to top it off, I'll finish with a couple more lengthy spreads. Now, these are ones that I would start getting into once you get to understand your deck a little bit more, because it'll make it a little easier to pull for these readings and understand these readings and you won't have to be flipping through your book as much. You can also jump right into these more complicated spreads if you really want to get your like elbows in there, you know? So a Celtic cross, the way that you would actually line up a Celtic cross is much like a cross. So your first card would go dead center. Your second card would cross over the first card. Then you'd put your third card above, fourth card below, fifth card to the left, sixth card to the right. Then from top to bottom off to the side, you're gonna go seven, eight, nine, and 10. Card number one is the situation you're asking about or the energy around the situation you're asking about. Card number two, the one that's crossing it, is the challenge that's basically blocking or challenging that initial situation. Card number three is your belief system or the beliefs surrounding this situation. Card number four is the root or the past that's created this issue. So whatever that deeply rooted thing is or the past situation that has caused this problem or this issue or this situation you're dealing with. Card number five is the more recent past. So this could be in days, weeks, or hours. Card number six is the near future. So what's looking to come right over the next few steps. Card number seven is how you view yourself or who you are in this situation where you stand. 
Card number eight is other people or other outside influences of this situation. So whether you're dealing with a person or you're dealing with something a little bit more general, then this would basically symbolize any outside energy. Card number nine is advice on the actions to take. So you can look at card number nine as basically you don't have to take this action, but it's giving you a general idea of a good way you could move forward. And you can choose that action based on card number 10, which is the likely outcome of the situation. So it doesn't mean that that will be the outcome of the situation. It's just what's likely based on the reading that you've pulled from. For me, when I do readings like this, obviously, if you ask a question and you do a Celtic spread, you could wipe that Celtic spread, ask the exact same question and get a completely different spread. So I think it's all about the energy that you're pulling, the messages that you're hearing as you flip and read these cards. And it's helping you understand what's already basically deeply manifested through your subconscious, what you've already concluded within yourself. Basically what I'm saying is don't expect card readings to give the responsibility to the outside world or the universe or the collective consciousness or whatever you believe in to help you fix your situation. It's actually a little bit more of understanding where you already stand and what's likely to happen because of the deep subconscious rooted beliefs and ideals or ideologies around your situation so that you can better understand them should you wish to reroute or take action in a different way or better understand something. People tend to kind of brush things like this off to the side and think that it's like weird or crazy or not legit. And because they say like, there's no way to know, there's no way to know the future, there's no way to know. And it's not necessarily about reading the future though. I definitely believe that there are some people deeply intuitive enough in, <laughs> deeply intuitive enough to be able to take very accurate guesses at what potentially could be the future. I just think it's more so you getting really deeply in touch with your intuition, your consciousness, your subconscious, which actually plays a huge, if not bigger role than your consciousness in your day-to-day -day life, because what you believe is what you perceive and what you perceive will totally dictate the actions you take, how much you believe in yourself, what you believe the outcome to be, and then you create your own self-fulfilling prophecy. So it's about better understanding your own deeply rooted seeds and understanding which ones you want to weed out and which ones you'd like to water and flourish. And that tangent came before even finishing me telling you about the last and final spread, which is you could do a 12 card spread. Now these spreads are great for looking at your year in advance. You can also obviously break this down by season. You can break this down by month. So if you wanted to do a six month card spread, if you have a birthday coming up, you can go for the full 12 months of your next circle around the sun. You can do it around the new year. You can do it anytime you want. You can also do it week by week. You could do it for the next three months if you're looking for a season, like what is spring gonna be like? Pull a card for March, April, May. You know, it's really all about what you are doing and your intention and your perception of what it is you're asking and what it is you're looking for. So there's really no wrong way to do it. There's so many creative ways that you can have fun with spreads, that you can create your own spreads. The more you do it, the more you'll find your groove, you'll find the ways that you like to read. So don't let anybody tell you that there's a right way or a wrong way. In terms of when I do a reading and I want to translate it over into my journal, what I'll normally do is write down what each of those questions are that I've asked and the card that came out and the message that came through to me. So I won't go from the guidebook and write down word for word. Instead, I'll be like, this is the general answer I feel like this card symbolizes for this question. And then the greatest thing that you can do once you've finished a reading is pull back, look at the full spread and see if there's a story going in order. So if you've pulled three cards, for instance, look at the first card, second card, and third card. Pretend it's a storybook. What is the story telling you? And then I'll translate that story into my journal section by section based on what I've asked and then give like a general, this is the final message that I'm receiving. Last little bit, I'm, I know I've been talking a lot, but just a few little disclaimers to make. So one, I do definitely believe that you can never go into a reading with ill intent. 
I personally do believe in karma and I think that if you go into a reading with ill intent or to be a little nosy or to invade in somebody else's privacy, that that will come back to bite you. So just be very careful. Don't expect that you can control somebody else's situation or their decisions or how they feel by going into readings or that you could ever understand how someone else is feeling. You might be able to get general sense, but nobody actually knows how they feel and who they are deeper than themselves. So just be careful to respect boundaries because karma I do believe is a very real thing. One and two, what was gonna be my second disclaimer? Well, it's gone. So let's just leave it at that. Just always make sure to respect people's privacy and boundaries. You can definitely inquire about a situation and how someone might be feeling about you, but you can never really know. You're really just getting more of a reflection of what you believe could be the truth of whether someone could like you or not, which is really just more telling about whether you like you. So do you like you? Your cards are just a mirror. They're a deep intuitive mirror that are gonna show you exactly what you believe about yourself, about the world, about the situations you find yourself in deep down. They're also a great way to get inspired, to look to cultivate certain energies or really harness in certain energies, you know? Your life is a constant manifestation of your own creation. And that can sound a little frou-frou and a little like pseudo spiritual, but basically what I'm getting at is that you can't change the past. You have semi control over the future, but right here in the present moment, you're constantly creating your reality. If you want to feel more inspired, get more motivated, harness certain energies in your life, be it your more feminine energy, or maybe you wanna harness a little bit more of your masculine discipline, go get it energy, whatever it is. Maybe you wanna balance your energies. Maybe you're looking for more peace in your life. Maybe you're looking for more inspiration or art in your life. These are ways that you can play around with not only imagery or numerology or messaging or your intuition, but also colors and symbolisms. There's just so much behind it that can help you really play with the subconscious, really get down into the nitty gritty, really come to understand deeply and intimately with your intuition. And the better you get at it, you can also read for other people too. That was gonna be my second disclaimer. I'm so glad I remembered. Okay, so my last disclaimer for you is when reading for other people, you have to be able to separate yourself from the situation. You don't have to like disassociate from yourself, but basically you need to completely cut off all personal ties to the person you're reading and read directly straight from your gut intuition without filtering too much through the brain. Because when you filter through much to the, through the brain, that's when your own judgment starts to play in and that's when the I comes in instead of the all, you know? like that's Sounds kind of crazy too, but basically if you're reading for another person, you need to completely separate yourself and just in a way cleanse the energy of the deck, cleanse the energy through yourself and also know that whatever you're receiving, don't judge it, don't think about it, you just have to read. Otherwise you're filtering it through your own perception and filtering it through your own judgment. So there you have it. That is not only my decks and my routine and my journaling routine with tarot reads, but spreads and everything in between. Let me know down below, what are your favorite spreads? What are your favorite decks? Have you ever gotten a tarot reading? Do you like to do your own? And without further ado, I will see all of you guys in the next Coz video. Bye guys.